Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing some experiments on the density of liquids. Talking of dense, I have my glamorous assistant, Nico. Hi there. I'm really excited to do some experiments today. Uh, what are we starting with first? Well, Nico. First up, we're going to be looking at the density of different liquids. So, for this experiment, we will need a container to put the liquids in. We will need a jug of cold water, some syrup, we've got some lovely golden syrup, I was using this on my pancakes this morning, oil and some blue food colouring. This experiment will demonstrate the different densities of the water, the oil and the syrup. So, let's begin. So we are going to start with the water. We're going to add some food dye to it to make it look a little bit more beautiful. And we're going to pour this in to our beaker. That looks great. Which should we go for next? The syrup, do you think? Yes, syrup. So we'll see whether this will stay above the water or sink below. So as you can see, it sunk right to the bottom, which is quite exciting. And that means that the syrup is more dense than the water. Gilbert. Sorry everyone, I had beans for breakfast. <laughs> now, finally, the oil. Now where do you think this will go? Do you think it will go sink down to the bottom or rise and stay at the top? I think at the top. Okay, awesome. We'll see. You were right. Yeah, as you can see. Yes. So the syrup is at the bottom, the water is in the middle, and the vegetable oil is at the top. This demonstrates that the syrup is the most dense and that the oil is the least dense. So, we have selected some items which we will drop in and see where they land. We have a Minion, a Jesse Toy Story Sumsum, a Nerf Bullet, a Coin, and a Captain America Lego minifigure. Right, it's time for our predictions. Why don't you play along at home and put your predictions down in the comments below? Have you done it yet? Come on. Now I'll do my predictions. Personally, I think that this coin will go right to the bottom because it's quite heavy. Yep. What do you think? Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think the coin's gonna go right to the bottom and I think the Nerf bullet's gonna sit right on the top. Undecided about our three characters, I think the Lego figure might sit just on the syrup, and I think the Sumsum may sink to the very bottom as well. But I'm not sure about the minion. What do you think? The minion could possibly just sit on top of the water there. Yeah, very possibly. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out where they'll settle, and that's by putting them in. Let's take it away. Oh, we got that one wrong. Mm. Didn't expect Captain America to float. No. Which one should I put in next? Um, the mm. coin? Yeah. So we were thinking this one's going to sink right to the bottom. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, straight down there. Right at the bottom. Uh, good, what should we do another one? Put in the minion. On top oh. of the water, we were yeah. right. Um, I'm going to go for Jesse. Where do you think? I was thinking the bottom of the water. So yeah. Here. Oh, you're all right. Yeah. Awesome. And finally, the Nerf bullet. On top. As we thought. Yeah. So the only one that we weren't sure about was Captain America. And he stayed right at the top. So, we've had an interesting development. Our minion is, has now sunk to just on top of the syrup, 
So now we have our objects in the liquid. It now shows us which material is more dense than the other. So the coin is made from metal, so that is more dense than everything above it. So our two toys here, Jesse and the Minion, have a lower density than the syrup and the coin, but a higher density than the water. That's why they've sunk to the bottom. Finally, we have Captain America and our Nerf bullet, which are both made from materials that are the least dense. So we've got plastic and foam. Interestingly, we've had nothing that is more dense than oil, but less dense than water. Yeah, there is nothing that has settled on this layer. Well, that's all well and good, but why did the minion get stuck here and then go down? Ah, that's a very good question. Ah, that's a very good question, Gilbert. The reason is the minion will have a similar density to the water. So it took a while for it to move through the oil and that is why it has also remained completely upright. Oh look, he's waving to our viewers at home. Nico, if you don't mind clearing the area, it's time for experiment two. Amazing. I'll move this out of our way. So what is our next experiment? Our next experiment will show us the difference between the density of hot and cold water. So for our second experiment, we're going to need two glasses, a jug of cold water, a jug of warm water, and so we can see what's happening, some blue and red food colouring. So we'll fill one glass to the brim with hot water and one glass to the brim with cold water. So I'll do the hot water. Which means I'll do the cold. So now we're going to pour our hot and cold waters into our beaker, but so we can tell the difference, we're going to put some food colouring in. So I've got red for hot. And I've got blue for cold. Put that aside. Uh, ready to pour the Yep. Right to the top. It is very important to get the water right to the brim without spilling it. So I think Gilbert have done an awesome job of that. Now we're going to be placing the hot water on top of the cold water. What do you think will happen, Nico? Well, I kind of think that they're going to mix, but because of density and the temperature of the water, they may not. You know what they say, heat rises. So time to uh, put the two jars together. I have my scientific slate. I'm going to balance that carefully on the pot. So I have my scientific slate in place. And now I need to flip the glass, keeping all the liquid inside, if possible. Three, two, one. Oh, great job there. So it's lucky, I used to be a magician, and my favorite trick was the old dish cloth under the dinner plate. So it's lucky, because that's basically what I'm gonna to have to do here. Line up the lips of the glasses. And now, very quickly, I'm going to pull out the slate. Three, two, one. And now, as you can see, the red has stayed up here. And the blue has stayed down here. So the red is obviously the hot water, and the blue is the cold water. This shows that the hot water is less dense than the cold water. I wonder, what do you think would happen if we were to flip it over so that the cold was at the top and the hot was at the bottom? What do you think would happen, Nico? With the cold water being on top, and which is more dense, and the warm water being at the bottom, which is less dense, they'll try to swap. And in this process, they will actually mix and create a purple liquid. Take it away, Nico. Well, just in case of any explosions, I need to have the goggles back on. Ready, Gilbert? Count me in. One, two, three, go. 
So there was a small spillage, but you can still see these have now mixed and they're just one purple liquid. Right then, Nico, tell me the science. So we've been learning about the density of liquids. Each liquid has its own individual density, and this is determined by how closely the molecules are packed. So, as we have seen today, the denser the liquid, the lower it sinks. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Which experiment would you like to see us do next? Comment down below. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, hi, Professor Gilbert here. Today I'm going to be teaching you all about the planets while building this solar system set. Right, let's open it up. Looks like here we've got the planets, a paintbrush, some paints, and the parts for the stand. Let's get going. I'm going to start with the sun because it's at the centre of the solar system. As well as being a science professor, I'm also a master at painting. Did you know the diameter of the sun is 865,000 miles? Over one million Earths could fit inside the sun. The sun accounts for 99% of the mass in the solar system. Next, let's move on to Mercury. Mercury is the smallest planet in the solar system. It only takes roughly 88 days for Mercury to do two orbits of the Sun. Next is Venus. Venus is very similar in size and mass to the Earth, and because of this, it's sometimes called the sister planet. The surface of Venus is hidden by an opaque layer of clouds. This is formed by sulfuric acid. Now we're moving on to Earth. Earth is the only planet in the solar system to support life. It's also the only planet that's not named after a Greek or Roman god. We now have Mars.
Mars is named after the Roman god of war. Next up we have Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. It will take 317 Earths to equal the mass of Jupiter. It's primarily made of gases, therefore it's known as the gas giant. Next we have Saturn. Saturn has over 60 moons. Saturn orbits the Sun once every 29.4 Earth years. Astronomers still don't fully understand the origin of Saturn's rings, but I have a few suspicions. Next we have Uranus. It has many moons, which are named after characters created by William Shakespeare. Uranus turns on its axis once every 17 hours. Finally is Neptune. Neptune has 14 moons. and only one spacecraft has flown by it. You might be wondering where Pluto is, but it is no longer considered a planet. It's too small, so it has been demoted to a dwarf planet. Now time to assemble my solar system. First up, we've got the sun. On it goes. Next, we have Mercury. Now, we have Venus. Next up, it's Earth. After that, we've got Mars. Next, it's Jupiter. Our next planet is Saturn. Up next, we have Uranus. And finally, Neptune. There we go, all done. My solar system isn't quite as old as the real one, which is 4.6 billion years old. So here I've just got the planets, but the solar system contains so much more. To name a few, moons, asteroids, the asteroid belt, and comets. 
So the sun is the hottest point in the solar system, but which do you think is the hottest planet? Mercury? The one right next to the sun? Surprisingly not. It's actually Venus. Thanks so much for watching. Which planet is your favourite? Comment down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Goodbye. Oh, it's you again. Hey, I'm Professor Gilbert and today I'm going to be teaching you all about the human skeleton with this human anatomy model. Time to get all the bones out of the box. We've got all our parts here. There's the stand. All of the bones are out of the box. Now it's time to build. So here I've got the arm which is attached to the hand. And did you know the hand is made up of 26 bones? The human skull is almost full size at birth and there are 14 bones that make up the facial skeleton. When correctly aligned, your foot arch can support six times your body weight. There we go, all done. So, my friend here came in a few different pieces, but the adult human body has 206 bones. The stapes in the ear are the smallest bone in the human skeleton. This is the femur, the largest and strongest bone in the body. Your ribs are very delicate and it could even break from a violent sneeze, but also they work very well as a xylophone. But if you were to get a broken rib, it could very easily puncture your heart or your lungs. In the spine, there are over 200 individual bones and 120 muscles. Thanks so much for watching this video. Do you know any interesting facts? Comment down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hello viewers! I'm Professor Gilbert and today I'm going to be teaching you about all the human body and the organs inside with this model. Let's get it out of the box and get started. So, inside the box we have the brain skull, the heart, the rib cage, the lungs, the liver, the stomach, the pancreas, the kidneys, the small intestine, the large intestine, the spine and the body. I'll start with the kidneys. In a single hour the kidneys receive 12 pints of blood. The blood is filtered and the waste is removed from it. Next up is the stomach. It contains strong acid to digest your food 
and to stop it from digesting itself, it produces a new layer of muscle every two weeks. I'm now attaching the pancreas to the stomach. The pancreas produces something called insulin, which regulates the blood sugar levels. Fun fact, the pancreas has taste receptors to measure how sweet food is and release the correct amount of insulin. I'm now attaching the small and large intestine. The small intestine takes nutrients from the food and puts it into the blood. It is also the longest internal organ at almost 16 feet. The large intestine turns food waste into feces. The large intestine processes 50 tons of food over an entire lifetime. That's like 20 elephants. Now I'm putting in the liver, which goes above the stomach. The liver aids digestion and removes harmful substances from the blood. It is also the largest internal organ. In goes the heart, the main organ of the circulatory system, which pumps blood around the body. It also beats 100,000 times a day. In go the lungs, part of the respiratory system, which breathes in oxygen and breathes out carbon dioxide. In goes the rib cage, which protects the heart and the lungs. Now for the brain, which controls the body, and the skull, which protects the brain. And finally, the spine. I'll turn my friend around so that you can see. The spine is part of the skeletal system. It contains 33 vertebrae, allowing movement of the back and the neck. Today, we learnt about the brain, the skull, the heart, the rib cage, the lungs, the liver, the stomach, the pancreas, the kidneys, the small intestine, the large intestine and the spine. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Which was your favourite body part? Comment down below. I couldn't possibly choose a favourite because they're all just as important as each other. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye! Bye! Oh, it's you again. Hey! I'm Professor Gilbert and today I'm going to be teaching you all about the human skeleton with this human anatomy model. Time to get all the bones out of the box. We've got all our parts here. There's the stand. All of the bones are out of the box. Now it's time to build. So here I've got the arm which is attached to the hand and did you know the hand is made up of 26 bones? A human skull is almost full size at birth and there are 14 bones that make up the facial skeleton. When correctly aligned, your foot arch can support six times your body weight. There we go, all done. So, my friend here came in a few different pieces, but the adult human body has 206 bones. The stapes in the ear are the smallest bone in the human skeleton. This is the femur, the largest and strongest bone in the body. 
Your ribs are very delicate and it could even break from a violent sneeze. But also, they work very well as a xylophone. But if you were to get a broken rib, it could very easily puncture your heart or your lungs. In the spine, there are over 200 individual bones and 120 muscles. Thanks so much for watching this video. Do you know any interesting facts? Comment down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time. Bye!